Welcome to Labmist.com and our lab video series on IPv6 and Cisco Router. You can find a complete list of IPv6 video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we will look at how we can transport IPv6 traffic across IPv4 network using 6RD or 6 Rapid Deployment point-to-mount-to-point -to -point tunnel. And we're specifically going to look into two scenarios, CE-to-CE -CE tunnel and CE-to-BR tunnel. Now for our lab topology, we have three routers, R1, R2, and R3, with R2 and R3 being a CE or client edge router connected to a client-based IPv6 network. Now for R1 is a BR or border relay router connected to a provider or internet edge IPv6 network. Now here in the middle, we have an IPv4 network with EIGRP enabled to provide reachability between R1, R2, and R3 leadback zero interfaces, which we were primarily going to be using as a source interface for our tunnel. Here we also have a watchhark machine setting up to span on R3 interface so we can later on analyze the tunnel packet. So before we dive into our configuration task, let's spend a little bit of time understanding the concept behind the 6RD tunnel. So the 6RD tunnel is actually intended to be used in the ISP or service provider environment, but you can easily adapt it to use any, pretty much any environment you like. The idea behind the 6RD tunnel is very similar to 6 to 4 tunnel where the IP of the tunnel destination or source is actually embedded as part of the IPv6 address. But with the 6RD tunnel there's actually an enhancement as far as we no longer fix to a certain IPv6 prefix format. As you can see here with the subnet format that's laid out, the IPv6 prefix can be pretty much a variable length. It's no longer a 2002 slash 16. So it can be anything that you like or usually it's the IP v6 subnet that you actually own as far as you being a provider. Same thing here with the embedded IPv4 instead of having the whole 32-bit IPv4 embedded into the prefix it can actually be a variable length and that's it's not only actually part of the IPv4 space that you own. Concept of subnet ID is still there although it's also a variable length instead of the fixed 16-bit length and when you combine all these together it still has the length of 64 bits. So you can see the format is much more flexible with the 6RD tunnel compared to the 6 to 4 tunnel. Here just to give you a little bit of a better understanding, here we're giving you an example. Let's say that you own an IPv6 prefix of 2003 AABB slash 32 and IPv4 of 172 16 slash 16. So now to convert the IPv6 prefix and IPv4 prefix that you own to a subnet that you need to allocate for each site, Let's take R2 for example. R2 here we have a loopback of 1621602 that we would use to source our tunnel with. Just to kind of look forward a little bit into our configuration of R2 tunnel 1. First we have a tunnel mode and specifies a 6RD. And then we have to specify the IPv6 prefix. In our case here is 2003AABB and we have to give it the length as well which is slash 32. And that gets mapped directly to the first part of the prefix for the site. Next we have a tunnel source loopback 0 and again it's just 172.16.0.2 and we need to specify the prefix length of our IPv4 which is in common for our site and since we own 172.16 we said the prefix length is 16. Okay so in the next part of the variable length IPv4 suffix is the combination of the, these two lines here the information as far as IP of the source interface and the prefix length. So by specifying the prefix length to be 16 the remaining bits for the IP is 0, 02, which is the last 16 bits, and that gets mapped to the variable length IPv4 suffix part of the address. Okay, and X to represent the subnet ID, and that can be pretty much anything that you would like to use for the site. So this is how we came up with 2003AABB2X slash 64 for the site that R2 router is connected to. Here for the X, we choose it to be 1 and 2, okay, which is our subnet ID. So with that now, let's just go through our configuration task. Here in this lab, we assume that we own an IPv6 space of 2003 AABB slash 32 and IPv4 space of 172.16 slash 16. Okay, with task number one, 6RD tunnel with CE to CE. So first, we're going to try to establish connectivity between these two client-based IPv6 network between R2 and R3. And first, we need to configure a 6RD tunnel on R2 and R3 based on the IP information that's been provided and the IP address of the tunnel needs to be configured using the general prefix command and the tunnel interface has to be sourced from loopback 0. Then we need to create a loopback 5 and 6 
on the two routers with the IP subnet that's just in compliance with the IP scheme that we own. And we're pretty much free to choose any of the two subnet ID for each of these routers. And then we need to configure static route to provide reachability and make sure that static route also will cover any of the future IPv6 site that we will later on add it. And then we need to verify reachability and analyze the packet capture using the Wireshark. Okay, so let's start our configuration on R2. First, we want to configure our tunnel interface, but before that, we need to define our general prefix with the command IPv6 general prefix. And we have already encountered this back in the 6 to 4 tunnel lab videos, but here we're also going to use it for our 6RD. Basically, for the general prefix, is the template of the IPv6 prefix that you can pretty much reuse for any of the interface IP configuration. First, we need to give it a name. So we're going to call it something intuitive, which is 6rd prefix. And with the question mark anomaly, you would here specify the IPv6 prefix that you will use throughout router configuration. But you can also see here that we have special option for 6rd and 6 to 4 tunnel. Since here we're dealing with 6RD, we've specified 6RD, and then we need to specify the tunnel interface, and we're going to choose tunnel number one. So now getting under the interface tunnel one with IPv6 address, and normally you would configure regular IP address right here, but since we are using general prefix, we're going to refer back to the name of the general prefix we just created. And the remaining part of the prefix can be usually pretty much anything for, as far as the IP address, but just to keep it simple for our 6RD tunnel here, we're just going to do colon colon slash 128. Okay, so next we need to source our tunnel from our loopback zero. And then we'll switch on to the mode IPv6 over IP, special type of 6RD. And then there's a sets of command for 6RD to question mark. We got BR, which we will later deal with in the next task. Here we have the prefix, which specify as we talked about earlier. And that is for the IPv6 prefix that you own. So for us, it's 2003AABB slash 32. And then we need to specify the IPv4 part of it. 6RD IPv4, start with the common prefix length. And for us, it's the first 16 bit, which is 172 16. And if you want to specify the common suffix length as well, you can do so right here. But since we're not doing that, I'm just going to press enter. That is pretty much defined what the format of the subnet of the site is going to be. Let's do a show run tunnel interface tunnel one. So right here, this is pretty much the flexibility of the 6RD. Next, we need to configure our loopback five. And let's go back into our diagram real quick. With loopback five is 2003ABB2. And then we have the subnet ID one and two ends with one. Okay, so IPv6 address 2003ABB, which is the IPv6 part of it. And then IPv4 suffix, which is two. And that represents the loopback address zero, which is the source of the tunnel. And then subnet ID one and ends with one. And then we configure the loopback six. And we're just going to change the subnet ID to two. And the last thing we need to configure is the static routes. And since all of our IPv6 prefix is going to start off with 2003 AABB, then we're just going to configure a single static route that will pretty much cover all of the IPv6 sites that might be later on added to our network with 2003 AABB slash 32. We'll send the traffic into tunnel one. Okay, now if you do show tunnel 6RD, it's just a special show command for this particular type of tunnel and specify tunnel number one. Here you see that the tunnel source is the R2 loopback zero interface, which is associated to 1602. It's operational with the V6 prefix of 2003 AABB slash 32. 
with the common IPv4 prefix of 172.16 with the length of 16, no suffix obviously, and with these information combined, it comes up with the general prefix for the site to be 2003AABB2-48, 48 being 32 bits plus 16. Okay, so now we need to configure pretty much the same thing on router 3, starting off with general prefix, 6RD prefix, type 6RD, tunnel 1, interface tunnel 1, IPv6 address, copy and paste the general prefix name, colon colon slash 128. Okay, and then tunnel source loopback 0, tunnel mode, IPv6 IP, or 6RD, and then tunnel 6RD, again with the prefix of 2003, AABB, slash 32, and tunnel 6RD, IPv4, with the prefix length of 16. Okay, now continue with the loopback 5 for this particular site. Actually, we can do pretty much the same command as before, which is show tunnel 6RD to U1. You can see here that our prefix is 2003 AABB3, which means for loopback 5 IP address, you can just copy this and then with the subnet ID of 1, 1. And then loop that 6, we do up arrow, change that to 2, and here we have both of our IPv6 subnets configured on R3. Then for the static routes, I can just hop back onto R2 and then copy the whole command since it will be pretty much identical with tunnel 1 on both. And here if you do show IPv6 interface tunnel 1, you can see how the link local address, since we source from a loopback 0, it has the IPv4 address kind of embedded as part of the link local address starting with FE80 and then the loopback IP in hexadecimal AC103. And here you can see our global unicast address. And this is as a result of using that general prefix. Okay, so now that we have both R2 and 3 configured, before we perform some ping tests, let's run uh, Washark on this interface, start the capture, and from R3 we can try to ping R2, loopback 5 with AABB2 subnet 1, 1, sourcing from its own loopback 5. See those are successful. We can source from loopback 6, just to do some combinations of the ping now, pinging to the subnet 2 on R2, loopback 5, and again sourcing from loopback 6 of R3. You can see all those are pingable, so we have complete reachability between loopback 5 and 6, between R2 and R3. Okay, so let's take a quick look at our packet capture here. Start off with the first batch of ping with R3 loopback 5. You can see the IPv4 header with the source IP of 172.16.03, which is R3 loopback 0, going towards 172.16.02, which is R2 loopback 0. And that is the tunnel destination. Well, the actual IPv6 source and destination is the R3 loopback 5, going towards R2 loopback 5. So you can see the source and destination IP for the IPv4 header is actually calculated as part of the destination IPv6 IP. So the same thing goes with you're trying to ping from R3 loopback 6, which is number 2 right here for the subnet ID, to the R2 loopback 5 with the subnet ID of 1. Okay, so that's the second batch of ping, third batch of ping, and the fourth batch of ping. So you can see how those tunnel destinations gets calculated from the original IPv6 destination IP. So that's complete our task number 1, now that we have verified reachability and look at the watchark packet capture.